saints. I want you to begin to pray in the spirit. Let's begin to tap into that artesian well in our spirit, man. Father, we praise you right now. We give you glory. We press into your presence, God. God, we unlock right now. We unlock that artesian well right now in our spirit, man, Father. In the name of Jesus, we say, oh, the floodgates open up, Father. Let the courts of heaven open up right now, Father. We thank you for access right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, God. Hallelujah. We say, let the river flow. We say, let the river flow. We say, let the river flow. In the name of Jesus, we open our mouth, Father. We speak and declare over this service, over this gathering, that the river of God, that the river of God will begin to flow. The city, the river that makes the city of God glad. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, right now, that your river is flowing, that the wind of God is blowing in this place right now. And God, we sail. We sail right now. We open up ourselves right now, Father. We press into your presence right now, Father. We press into your presence right now. Let virtue and praise come. Let virtue and power be released, God. As we praise, as we pray in the spirit right now, we stir up, God. We stir up the river right now, Father. In the name of Jesus, the well that never runs dry, God. Move by your spirit in this place, God. Let prophecy flow, God. Let miracles flow, God. Let the prophetic begin to flow in this place, God. Let the word have free course and free reign, Father. Let your people be healed today, God. Let the healing waters of God flow. Let the healings of waters of God flow. In the mighty name of Jesus, we jump in the water, God. Lord, trouble the waters today, God. Trouble the waters today, Holy Spirit. Prep our hearts today, right now, Father. We say that we are ready. We say we are ready. We declare that we are ready for the morning dew. We declare we are ready for the morning dew. We are ready for the revelatory mind of God. In the name of Jesus, let the mind of Christ migrate in this place. Let the mind of Christ permeate this atmosphere. Let the mind of Christ begin to take over right now. In the name of Jesus, raise the level of our expectation right now in the name of Jesus, God. Let every heart be circumcised. Let every mind be on one accord right now in the name of Jesus. God, let power flow. Let there be demonstration, God. Minister to your people right now, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, stir us up, God. Stir up the wind of God in this place, Father. Move in your power. Move in spirit and power, God. In the name of Jesus, God. Cause our feet to be like hind feet. Make our faces like flint. We look towards you. We look towards you, Father. We focus on you. We give you our undivided attention today, God. Break up the fallow ground in this place, God. That the river of God would flow. Break up the fallow ground in our hearts. That the river of God would flow. In the name of Jesus, water the dry places in our hearts, God. Water the dry places in our lives, God. In the name of Jesus, let the moisture of God, let the moisture of God, let the former rain and the latter rain come right now. Bring forth the harvest, God. Bring forth the harvest, God. Bring forth the harvest, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, come on, give the Lord praise. Oh, God, we stir it up right now. We stir it up right now. We stir up ourselves right now. Ignite the hunger, God. Rekindle the flame, Father. In the name of Jesus, rekindle the flame in our hearts, God. In the name of Jesus, Father. Those places that have been dry and weary, God. Lord, rekindle, Father. Light the fire, God. Bring moisture in our dry places, God. In the name of Jesus, Father, we give you honor. We give you praise, God. We lift your name up. We extol you. We exude you, Father. We esteem you as sacred and holy in this place. You're wonderful. You're majestic. You're powerful, God. Oh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on and lift them up. 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 We press in. We press in. We press in. We plow forth. In the mighty name of Asha, we plow forth in the Ma-Rakadaka. We plow forth in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, God. Ah. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Shut 
The Lord declares royalty comes upon this house. I give you the ethics. I give you the protocols. I give you the wisdom of a people who understand the dynamic of royalty. It's a place of elevation for you. And you'll begin to see those come from near and far. And they'll open the hearts and they'll give up their treasures to bless even that which I do in this place. So the Lord says, prepare yourself, O rivers, and embrace the largeness of heart I give to you collectively as a people. You've not allowed the things you've seen to move you, but you've been moved by my word. And now comes the days of fulfillment. The days of fulfillment. The days of fulfillment. I want you to get that in your spirit. The days of fulfillment. This is that which was declared. It is here. It is here. If you received that, put your hands together and give our king a thunderous hand clap of praise. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on, we're blessing the king of glory. The one who has released his blessing to increase us and to elevate us. Come on, give our God a shout of praise this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout glory. Let's put our hands together for all the amazing mothers who are here. Oh. Now, I would expect that level if it was Father's Day, but it's Mother's Day. So let's stand to our feet in honor of all the mothers and just the great matriarchs in our families. people. Thanks, thank you so much just for uh, coming out today and pressing into uh, the service. You know, holidays have a tendency to really um, highlight where a lot of us are in our faith. And, um, you know, Israel got in trouble because of their holy days and all of that. And I'm not a stickler for holidays. And so I will not bore you. I actually have a, a leader in part of our ministry whose surname is Holiday. So Every time I see him, I sing the song, Holiday. <laughs> but the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. So we're so grateful uh, once again for all the mothers, uh, my wife included, um, who will make her debut here in not many moments hence. So we thank God for Prophet Yolanda Garner. Um, and just um, her life. And then, of course, there would not be any Prophet Yolanda Garner apart from Mother May Shiner, so my awesome mother in love. Amen. I got to give it to my, my, my mother in love. She is probably uh, one of the most consistent individuals I know. Um, 30 plus years as a postal worker, you know she got to have some stick to itness in her. I've never seen a woman ever be double breasted with mace. She got mace on one side, pepper spray on the other. And she got bear spray in the small of her back. And the many canines have met their fate messing around with Mama May on her various roots. But she is such a blessing uh, to our family and uh, even uh, the, the grandmother status. And then the great uh, grandma status that she has now with our first uh, granddaughter, Justice. And so we are so delighted uh, for all of the amazing women of God who are here. Just want to uh, share something with you uh, just in honor of mothers. Once again, let's put our hands together and applaud all of the mamas in the building. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Uh, my mom actually departed this life 14 years ago. The month of August will make 14 years. And uh, she was probably um, my biggest uh, cheerleader. I think she outdone my wife um, on a grand scale. And uh, she claimed my wife as a daughter when we met back in 1986, and she was prophesying. Of course, I assume she was a false prophet because I was not into uh, that kind of stuff. She's like, that's, that's my daughter-in-law. I was like, no, I had a lot of more hunting to do, but the Lord knew. So uh, he was gracious, and uh, she was a quintessential professional, very uh, sharp woman. Uh, my sister and I actually witnessed her 
uh, work our way out of uh, poverty and uh, become a professional of um, of, the, of a distinct pedigree and move into ownership. And so we saw even her educational and academic process to really break barriers and uh, proclivities in our natural family lineage and to, be, and to go on to become the great person that she was. And so mothers are extremely important in the overall trajectory of humanity. Um, so for fathers, your day will come sometime next month and we'll see what the Lord gives us for you. But the day is the day uh, to celebrate our moms. So the New Living Translation for Proverbs 31, verse 31 reads this way. Reward her for all she has done. Let her deeds publicly declare her praise. The New International Version reads this way. Honor her for all that her hands have done and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. That's powerful. To honor your mother is being respectful in a word and action, in word and action and having an inward attitude of esteem for their position. The Greek word for honor means to revere, prize, and value. Honor is giving respect not only for merit, but also for rank. I like that. Not only for a merit, but also for rank, who they are in our lives. Um, so that eliminates all dishonor because you've done the best you can with what you had, and you still made ends meet, nurtured, raised uh, your, your children, loved them, showed compassion, and gave them your very best. Um, to the uh, very best uh, from your seat of motherhood. So today we honor all of the mothers. Happy Mother's Day. One more time, let's put our hands together and bless the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. All right. Well, I got a word for you. Uh, it's not a Mother's Day word. I was very perplexed um, initially where we've been in this series of, of dealing with virtue and value, um, the developing of extraordinary people. And God is really concerned about the inward progression of a people in Christ's likeness and really bringing us into a place where now the transactable skills we have can begin to push us into a realm of breakthrough and unforeseen and unforetold influence and increase. And it has a lot to do with understanding the biblical narrative of virtue. And so what I want to do uh, in this service and in the 1030 service as well we're going to build on the subtopic of excellence and highlight some things that I feel are of grave importance for this local congregation to really rise above some of the demonic dictates that have seized the territorial grid and sought to subject people, even believers, to what is versus what God declared should be or versus what God has ordained is to be. And so let's go to our foundational um, scriptures in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. I'm going to read these verses. According as his divine power have given unto us all things. Somebody say all things. That pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. That by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this giving all diligence add to your faith faith, virtue. Now, in 2 Peter 1, 3, in the English Standard Version, it reads this way. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who have called us to his own glory and excellence. This is a word that I feel has been extremely abused in the local church setting and really not necessarily reconciled back to Christ. One of the things we've been uh, tracking with for the last two years in this local church to our online audience in particular is that we've been highlighting the fact that if it cannot be reconciled back to Christ, we need to deem it unfit for the call of God that's on us and then label it what it is, human desire. There are a lot of things that have been pushed to unassuming believers and packaged as being Christ, but really is just the ideology or the agenda of a human being who has not purpose to live according to the mandate of Jesus Christ. So if it cannot be reconciled back to him, then we don't need to try to package it and present it as being of him. Simply call it what it is. This is why even when it comes to growing a local church, when it comes to developing people, we don't need antics and tactics that come from grandiose marketing schemes because if you inaugurate that kind of activity, you'll have to continue to do that to sustain the people. This is why I have become extremely content with being who I am. I'm going to preach the gospel, preach the truth, and whatever it is that comes as a result, 
I'm okay with that. Because sometimes when you utilize things that are extra biblical, you will eventually exhaust those things. But God's word is exhaustless. And I'm really convinced, saints, that the spirit of God is carving out a hunger in the earth for people that, that really desire the authentic Jesus Christ, not the trending Jesus, not the Jesus that we present on Easter Sunday, and then we never talk about that Jesus until another 365 days later. I'm talking about the, the, the Jesus the, the, who is known as the Son of God, who was made manifest in the flesh, Emmanuel with us in the embodiment of the attributes that he possessed and how he lived his life. This is the hunger that is coming up on the earth, and it's going to require people of excellence who understand who he is what he's all about and present him to those that that that, that were once uh, despising him in their hearts but now they desire him this is important for us as a church and so two things from the text where God's divine power and God's divine nature must be embraced these two things serve as a nexus to connect us to the exceeding great and precious promises, but also they give us an escape from the corruption that is in the world through lust. You and I must become a people who are astute, who are sticklers for learning, who have a desire to grow in knowledge and to grow in grace if we're going to have an excellent presentation and then develop skill that's consistent with what we know that puts us in a status where we become superior, not in the context of being, other, uh, being better than other people, but superior in what we do and superior in who we are. Say excellence. See, excellence always demand extreme results. There are people in the body of Christ who say they love God, but yet they give him a mediocre presentation on a day-to-day -day basis. Mediocrity is an enemy of excellence. And you and I would never be the type and quality of virtuous people if we embrace mediocrity. Remember our working definition for a virtue? It, it, it gives the connotation of an individual understand I have special worth. Come on, say I have special worth. And then it highlights an individual who is upstanding morally. And then it emphasizes courage in the midst of indifference and opposition. Courageous leadership is at a deficit these days. When you look at the global landscape and all of the threats that are seeking to sanction nations with gross instability, and you can reconcile that stuff back to a leadership that is not courageous. People want to do things to appease others. They want to do things that they feel will win a popularity contest or a political position and then make decisions that will ravage generations to come. And this is where in the body of Christ, all of us are going to be marked by our decisions. And I, 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 God spoke to me earlier this week during my time of devotion. And the thought that I meditated on the entire week was that I shall not be moved. I shall not be moved. I shall not be moved. And Psalm 15 highlights who shall abide in God's tabernacle, who shall stand before his holy hill. David lists about nine things. And then he says that when you do these things, you shall never be moved. Unfortunately, the instability that is in the earth through a lack of courageous leadership has caused a lot of people to be shifted. Shifted in their opinions, shifted in their convictions, shifted in their orientation. And this is a challenge. This is why we've got to really become serious about salvation and our relationship with Jesus Christ. Stop allowing uh, uh, some little people who are governed by uh, ministerial things and who uh, have an appetite for mediocrity to become the object of your desire and blindside you when it comes down to destiny and purpose. Uh, you were born again for something greater, people of God. And if you're going to move in excellence, there must be a commitment to partake of his divine power, partake of his divine nature and live your life in the earth as Christ. Now, I got some stuff I need to throw at you here. Excellence by way of definition is the quality of ex uh, the quality of excelling and being the very best at something. It's a quality that has to do with excelling and then becoming the very best. What is it that you do? What are your transactable skills? What are the things that you to remember now yet your hands 
are, are, are necessary for the release of the body of work. And one thing about your hands is that God, God, God's blessing will come upon the work of your hands. Uh, and so if you are a professional, if you work in corporate America, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a business owner, it doesn't make a difference where you are in life. You should have a desire to excel. And out of your desire to excel, there should be a personal culture of excellence that makes you superior in what you do. That is where the dominion mandate can be fulfilled. A lot of us, because of hijacked identities and issues with rejection, we don't know who we are, so it's difficult to discern that transactable skill and to become excellent at it. Hmm. God gives you a thought. God gives you an idea. It's a multi-million dollar idea. You've got to put the work in to develop the idea. I don't care if you don't have the money to, to, to what you think you need to fund the idea. At least you have the mindset. You have to realize that sometimes it's the mental position that you take and you develop yourself from that place and you, you, you hone those skills. You sharpen those skills so that any time uh, your transactable skill is required, you may not have all the trappings, uh, but you got the best quality in the context uh, of presentation uh, and the end result is that what you produce is better than anyone else. Oh, you say you bake. Well, what's different about your cake than anybody else's? Well, you don't, you know, I got that flim flam flume on mine. If you ain't from the west side, you don't understand flim flam flume. Because you were taught how to bake a cake by individuals who didn't understand measurements. But when they baked their cakes, it activated your palates to say, it's like, it, it, is it cracking this cake? Because every time I eat a piece of it, I desire more. You know, they got some cookies out called eat some more. They're butter cookies. And when you eat them, and well, in the UK, they call them biscuits. But if you eat one, you're going to eat some more. Because, it, because of the way it meshes with your palace and activates just an explosion. Of, somebody here know what I'm talking about. They're shaking their head. Come on, preacher. That's my language right there. And as a result, this brand has been around for uh, over 100 years. What am I saying? Everybody maybe in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a school of culinary arts learns how to bake. But when they want to present some pastries to the upper management of the actual school, they call you. Why do they call you? Because there's something about your baking skills that's transcendent. And as a result, it puts you in a category now where you are called upon to, to, to share those skills when others are overlooked, not because of their presentation, not because of them as a person, but because your skill transcends. See, as a born-again believer, when you give your life to Christ, you become a part of a kingdom that's transcending. As a matter of fact, it is written that the Lord has established his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. If we're going to be a people of virtue where we understand the power of our special work and we can use that to get a winning edge in life to advance the vested interests of God, we live a morally upstanding life and we have courage, you need to know that with these things, that's consistent with his nature, we need power. And the power is going to be released through your skill. That's like when it comes to teaching on intercession. I, I, I'm, I don't, I'm, I'm not in competition with anything but mediocrity in me. But when it comes down to a presentation of prayer and teaching the saints how to pray, I know God has given me skill. The skill didn't come by osmosis because I hope for it. No, it came with spending time in the word, getting supernatural insight, spending time actually praying uh, and developing stamina in prayer, and then Holy Spirit opening up portals uh, of supernatural insight uh, where things were, were developed in the context of books, uh, of training courses, of intensives, uh, of curriculums to do what? To empower individuals to rise uh, from one level of prayer into another. Are you listening to me? This is important when it comes to developing people. What are you good at? What is the call of God on your life? Everybody's not called to a podium in a pulpit. You may be called to the secular. You may be a professional. You may be involved in finance. You could be involved in education. You could be involved in, in the medical field. Why not believe God for a supernatural idea within your respective sphere? And then you develop skills around that. That puts you in a realm that's transcended. Some of us think too little of ourselves and as a result, we don't take time to develop excellence. See, man looks on the outward appearance and God looks on the heart. You got that, right? 
So if you want to catch the attention of men, you better work on your outward appearance. Some folk will overlook you because you don't look the part. Well, I rebuke the devil. I bind the devil. You're wasting your time. You're wasting your time. Because there are certain realms that God is calling us to. You're going to have to develop the personal decorum to access those realms to begin with. You may say, well, I only have one suit. Well, you need to invest money in dry cleaning. And not any dry cleaning. You go to the best one. I was listening to a, um, like a little documentary about um, a particular R&B uh, individual. Uh, and this guy shared that he got his, he lived a life where he was on drugs and just really messed his whole family up. And he was in a very low place. And he ended up getting um, a position, uh, a part of a music ministry for a very, um, how can I say, a very profound ministry within the territorial grid where he finally settled down. And they had to wear suits. And the guy said he only had one suit. But every week, he would get a different tie because he couldn't afford to buy another suit. He'd get another shirt because <laughs> he, he couldn't afford to get the whole suit. But over a period of time, as he saved enough money, but every time he was called on, he had the, he had the appeal to keep him in the position. Well, those were his humble beginnings. Now he's selling out stadiums all around the country and has record-breaking sales with his music. And it's very interesting how because he refused to allow his current predicament to deny him of honing his skills. He knew he could sing. He knew it was a gift from God. But he also knew that in this realm, if my skills are to be transactable, there's a certain look and presentation that I must have. Are you with me, people of God? Okay, because we want to become a people of excellence and really move in a realm of breakthrough where God can be glorified through what we do. So for the next 20 minutes or so, I'm going to give you um, several things about what excellence actually does. Um, Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, in the voice translation. But you, but you are called to something higher. Be perfect as your father in heaven is perfect. And then in Deuteronomy 32 verse 4 in the New Living Translation, Deuteronomy 32 verse 4, New Living Translation, he is the rock, his deeds are perfect. Everything he does is just and fair. He is a faithful God who does no wrong, how just and upright he is. Now, excellence is actually an invitation to come up higher. You have to realize, like in Job chapter 37, it talks about how when you touch the Almighty, he is excellent in judgment. God himself is excellent. And any time believers get on a pursuit of excellence, it's an invitation to come up higher. See, some people are content with being a part of the status quo of their immediate environment. But I don't know about you. God has put largeness in my heart. I refuse to be bound by to a specific demographic when the globe belongs to God. I refuse to be confined to a specific group of people when uh, all people belong to God. Are you listening to me? I refuse to be poor and in poverty and subjected to the dictates of another when my father has given uh, through, through to Jesus Christ, my redeemer, all power in heaven and in earth. Uh, and he told me uh, after I received his spirit, I too will receive power. Are you listening to me? And it's not power just to go and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's also power to live it. It's also power to demonstrate it. It's also power to partake of the, the inheritance that belongs to me because I'm an heir of God and I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. So excellence is an invitation for the believer to come up higher. You have to realize that a lot of us have dumbed down the standard of life God has called us to because of vents and internal issues that actually deny us information, that deny us connections, and that deny us access. And sometimes it's because we agree with it. You, you, you'd be surprised at some of the insight you could gain by just reading a book and purposing to apply the information from a book. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. You'd be, you'd be so, you, 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 mind-blowing activity. It is very important, people of God, the presentation, the internal quality, and the overall orientation of who you are as an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ should be met with excellence. You give your very best all the time. There's no off days when it comes down to being excellent. 
There, there's, no down, there's no downtime when it comes down to being excellent. When you look at people who, 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 surpa who, who surpass limitations, who, who establish a, a, a new precedence, who pioneer and really break, break forth into new activity and encounters, these are people who have a commitment to doing the same thing over and over and become skillful at it. So this excellence is an invitation to come up higher. Excellence knows only one direction that's higher. Say higher. higher. Excellence is the driving force for the elevation of virtuous people. It's the accelerant to our passion for greatness. You see, the greater one lives inside of us. And one thing about excellence is not a destination. It's a journey. It's a journey that has no end. Because when God puts you in the one, like God, God wants to set our feet in a large place. Do you not know that sometimes you just need to be around certain types of people to, to activate what's already in you? Do you not know you need to be in certain environments to stir up what's already in you? Because he's already given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. Sometimes you need to get around people who are already excelling in what you are called to do so it can activate who you really are. God help us. In, 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 in ministry today, it's, it's this, it's this pseudo-vertical relationship that never ends in maximum results in the recipients of what's being proclaimed. You have a responsibility to develop you. You have a responsibility to desire to be an extraordinary human being and to judge everything in your life that is not outstanding from your conversations, to your engagement with other people, to your interaction with, with, with things that God has called you to. Some of you are in a process right now, and internally you're despising your process, but the process carries profit. You know what happened? You're going to give a subpar performance to the process, and as a result, you're going to get minimum results. Remember, you don't, you're not in competition with anyone. You're in competition with the stuff that's working in you that does not want to unleash the greatness that's already in you. It's time to come up higher. It's time for us to come into a higher realm of, of, of functioning, a higher realm of legislation, a higher realm of self-government, a higher realm of fruitfulness, a higher realm of increase, a higher realm of abundance. I don't know about you, but I want opulent stuff. You know why? It's something about, you remember this, this guy named Solomon in the Bible? Solomon was chosen to build the temple of God. God spared no expense to the point where what Solomon built activated desire in kings and other renowned people to come and see. It was excellent. And when you and I, as heirs of God's kingdom, there's so much anointing, there's so much spirit dimensions of power and authority in this church, but that stuff does not necessarily manifest as a transactable skill. So what we got to do, we got to take what God has given us and build something that men would desire to see. Because you got to realize that we walk by faith and not by sight, but at the same time, humans are moved by what they see. Here's a good example. This is going to mess you up. <laughs> the projects versus a mansion. You look at one, it creates a mental picture. You look at the other, it creates a different picture. You look at some with bars and cages and bricks and concrete. Then you got other stuff with architectural design and detail and then opulence backed it in. You got grass and not broken glass. And, you know, it does something to your shondo. And you, and you should want that. Why, why, why receive the kingdom of God, be born into it, and then still be subjected to mentalities as anti-kingdom? Some of us can start just by making sure that your personal space is excellent. Demonstrate some appreciation for what God has given you, starting with your physical body. Tend to it. Cultivate it. Minister to it, nurture it, get it as healthy as it possibly can. Let it become optimal in the context of, of, of just health in itself because you are valuable. Remember, because you're, you're, you're virtuous, that means that you have special worth. Don't allow others to experience the displeasures of your bad decisions with what you have done with you. 
<laughs> Don't allow others to experience the displeasure of your bad decisions based on what you've done with you. Sometimes people reap indifference because we just won't do right with us. No child should have to deal with uh, a, a parent who has abused themselves over a period of time and then puts them in a position where now it's just produced pain for everyone or no, or, or no parent should have to deal with a child who has abused themselves and done wrong by themselves against themselves uh, and now the parent has to deal with this case scenario. We ought to love ourselves enough to become excellent. If it means you got to get up 30 minutes early to do a couple of squats and a few sit-ups and push-ups, I release grace upon you. If it means that you got to stop eating things that, we're gonna, that, that are going to kill you and put you into a premature death status, uh, I release grace upon you. If it means that you got to disconnect from people uh, who carry all kinds of wicked stuff uh, and for some reason you keep gravitating toward them, uh, I release grace for you to sever those ties uh, and those connections in the name of Jesus. You should desire to excel. Mm -hmm. Father, help. Excellence always aligns its participants with capacity to break vertical limits or vertical limits. In other words, you get to a certain level and all of a sudden it becomes, you can't go any higher. But excellence will help you break those vertical limits and continue ascending. Do you not know that the literal meaning of the compounded phrase born again means to be procreated from on high? That's what it means in the Greek. Born again, the Greek word 509, Greek key 509, it literally means to be procreated from on high, which means that the moment you accept Christ, your status changes from earthly to heavenly, from natural to supernatural, from time expiration to eternal, and you're yet still on the earth. You've got to develop this new life, and you've got to live it out with excellence. It begins with a commitment. Excellence is also rewarded. In Colossians chapter 3, verses 23 and 24, work willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than people. This is the New Living Translation, verse 24. Remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward and that the master you are serving is Christ. Now this is important because a lot of times we do things whether it's natural or spiritual that gain the attention of people. But when you understand how excellence operates and your, the, anything in life that becomes profitable for you, that gives you a winning edge, that puts you in a dimension where now you rise to a different status is because of the Lord's doing. God desires for you and I to become phenomenal human beings and exceptionally excellent at whatever it is he's called us to do in life. And a lot of that, big, and most of that stuff has its genesis in you making a decision. I decided many, many years ago when I got saved that average was not my portion. Don't allow the tenure that you have to deal with to discourage you. Some of us, God has to take us away, which we've never gone before, because what you're called to do has never been done before. This is where values, disciplines, this is where understanding who you are, solidification of your identity, the settling of affairs that have been programmed to arrest your development, all that stuff comes into being and God is calling us to a higher realm in him. Whatever you do, in word or in deed, you do it as unto the Lord. And this is why in local church settings when we deal with people who want to live a subpar life, uh, there are always issues surrounding commitment. See, because I don't want to worship and be on a worship team and minister to the Lord. I want to get the attention of people. So wherever I feel like I'm not uh, numero uno and getting the attention from man, I would not serve in any capacity and my commitment would be unstable at best. Not just worship any position in the local church where people feel like that, you know, I'm not getting the attention of the pastor. I'm not getting the amens and the praise God and I'm not getting the accolades from people. Well, here, here's the problem. You could be dealing with idolatry and God is killing your idols and therefore everything you try to transact in the house of God, there's an idol behind why you do what you do and God hates idolatry so he cuts it off. 
This is a word for us. If you're going to be excellent, you got to know that the Lord is your reward, and he rewards those who do what they do as unto him. Notice what the text says in verse number 24. Remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward. Do you not know that there was this guy named Esau, and there was a time when his appetite was more valuable to him than his inheritance. Esau tells his brother Jacob, you can have the birthright blessing, just give me a morsel of meal. So Jacob transacts with him a legal transaction. But the days came when Isaac was about to die. And Jacob and his mother conspired to get the blessing. But he already had the blessing because Esau literally had already gave it away because of an illegal, unauthorized, and unchecked appetite. Hear me, people of God. And then Isaac releases the blessing and... Jacob gets it, and Esau now conspires to murder his brother, but he failed to realize you made a decision in a previous season of your life that showed up in your future, and when you should be moving in a certain dimension of blessing and increase, now you got murder and destruction working through you. A lot of us, when it comes down to elevation and getting in the realms where we become superior and we move and we need divine connections, there's a powerful passage in Proverbs 23 or Proverbs 24. It says that if you're basically summoned to come and meet a ruler and you're a person given them much appetite, it's best for you to cut your own throat. So what am I saying? A lot of us, when it comes down to really promotions and getting in the realms where the inheritance of the Lord prevail, our appetites for order, for honor, and for covenant have disqualified us. And when you should be shining and being your very best and surpassing and moving in greatness, you're still in the same circuit. Come on, say excellence. We got to judge mediocrity in our thought patterns, judge mediocrity in your vision, judge mediocrity in your relationships. I'm not going to be hanging around gossiping people. I'm not. I'm not, I mean, there are times I need to vent. I have a certain group of leaders that I vent to. I have to get the stuff out of me. But God hates gossip, and he despises talebearers. And some of y'all talk too much. You talk way too much about people, about what the folks are doing, and none of that stuff is developing you. God help us. People of virtue are highly sensitive to their God-ordained mandates. Their work ethic and commitment to do so with excellence is their offering unto the Lord. People of virtue are relentless when it comes to executing their duties in service unto the Lord. Listen, they emphatically believe and without a doubt that if the Lord ordained it, then it must be executed with absolute excellence. Excellence in any aspect of life is celebrated and rewarded. From those in the business sector that meet and exceed the company uh, uh, goals in a specific quarter. Notice how anytime someone does something that's surpassing, there's always celebratory activity and there's always some allotting with praise and showering of gifts. This is not from, 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 from business ventures to villages in remote places around the globe. A hunter goes out and it's a specific season and that hunter is excellent. And comes back with the spoils. The whole village celebrates. Remember the song, uh, Saul has killed his thousand, uh, but David has killed his ten thousand. That proverb, they were saying, what were they, what were they doing? Wait, they were rewarding David because he excelled as a warrior. What are you excelling in? Expect to be rewarded by our Father. What are you, what are you skillful at doing? Expect to receive the blessing from our Father. Whatever you do, in word or in deed, you do it as unto the Lord. Father, help us. Last one and I'm done. Well, I do have two more, but I'll condense it. Modeling excellence. Titus chapter 2, verses 7 through 8 in the English Standard Version. Show yourself in all respect to be a model of good works and in your teaching show integrity, dignity, and sound speech that cannot be condemned so that an opponent may be put to shame having nothing evil to say about you. I like that. I like that. I like that. So 
when it comes down to this dimension of excellence where we're superior, we're surpassing, we tap into a realm of greatness, it has a lot to do with you and I embracing a model, becoming a model, a model of good works in our doctrine, in integrity, in, in the place of honor or dignity, and then in our speech as well so that anything that comes up against you to condemn you is totally displaced and the weapon formed against you doesn't prosper. So you can quote Isaiah 54, 17, all you want. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. But if you put yourself in alignment with behavior for the weapons formed to prosper against you, you know what's going to happen? You're going to become a casualty of your own doing. Excellent people embrace a pattern of living that's duplication worthy. The pattern doesn't come from them. It comes from Christ. And he gives us these areas in the text, in your doctrine, in integrity, in dignity, and in your speech. It's important. Even when it's just you dealing with you, do not dumb down who you are. Do not allow your personal issues to disqualify you from accessing your next. Do not speak in language that's, uh, that's agreeing with whatever the issue may be in your life. Expose it by sharing it with a trusted source and then deal with it in the spirit so that it will never manifest to the degree in which hell has ordained. Excel! In governing yourself. Excel in overcoming obstacles. Excel in enduring indifference. Excel when it comes down to managing the hardships of life that are germane to the all the, to, the, to the whole populace of humanity. God has called us to greater. And we're excellent people. Vertical limits must be broken. Ascending grace must descend upon you. You must become that pattern of good works. Because excellence is the journey you chose. Come on, put your hands together and bless the Lord. Mm -hmm. There are several other areas. Paul, to the church of the, uh, Philippi, he writes in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, Finally, brothers, whatever is true and whatever is honorable and whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. A big part of modeling excellence, once again, has to do with our mindsets. Remember I told you that you can be extremely skillful and you got the best product in that respective aspect of the market because nobody can do what you do. You just lack the resources uh, and perhaps the credibility in the room of me and, uh, and the opportunity. Uh, but in your mind, it's already made up and you don't look at a closed door as a means of an end. You look at it to, to, because there must be a better opportunity. Sometimes it could be with the same source where they do not agree and give you the contract the first time around. No. But then they call you and your low-level bidding self realize that they're going to give you twice as much as you agree. One of, one of, our, one of our leaders, I agree with them in prayer, and I've been having a very interesting week in, in the place of intercession, but at the end of the week, I got a testimony that there was an agreement for a six-figure contract one of the leaders in our church, a quarter million dollars, the contract came through. It was opposition. I took on the assignment every week, prayed, prayed in tongues, made the decrees by way of unction, began to declare things that should not come into pass, will not come to pass, whatever's not been planned by God. I don't care how good it looks. Uh, I prophesy failure on it. Are you listening to me? And something real simple, true testimony. I was praying in tongues on Wednesday. And I, I prayed my prayer was, God, let nothing seduce me. Let me not be deceived. And let me not get involved in any transactions uh, that will not produce a benefit for me. So this website pops up, and I'm like, wow, warehouse closed. Mm. I prayed. I heard Holy Spirit say very clear, don't buy this stuff. Because I'm looking. I put something else in the basket, a little bit more safe. Put something else. I was about to text my wife. She was gone. Text one of my sons. I was about to hit up a couple of my guys. I'm like, man, this is. But I was distracted in the process, and the voice of the Lord came through again. Vet this. So I called the actual store only to find out that the website was a scam. Are you listening to me? And then I stopped right then after I got off the phone. I gave God thanks, and I gave God praise. Why? Because what I prayed the Father brought to pass. Now, that may not be a big deal to you, but what I had been dealing with the thought was divine guidance and never being moved. See, we're in a sensitive time in human history 
where these days will be written and in a time to come declared that there were people supernaturally guided by the skillfulness of God who demonstrated impeccable excellence in that volatile time of human history uh, and they went on to do phenomenal things. Uh, there's a realm of inventions that's coming. Not, not, not even technological stuff, but inventions in the context uh, of helping to repair the minds of humans. You better, you, better, you better know that it's coming, and it's not coming from the secular world. There's, there, I believe Jesus is releasing a grace uh, upon his church to move in that realm of miracles uh, and signs and wonders uh, and the, the onslaught of mental illness, mental instability, uh, and mentally debilitating activity uh, that has been fostered by hell for this time uh, in human history uh, is not going to fulfill the narrative that hell has written because a people of excellence arising, skillful. They have transactable skills that will impact change. Why not us? Why not you? God wants to do it for his people of God. And it, it's going to take some, some renewing of, of vows. It's going to take some renunciation of stuff that we've gotten involved in. But whatever it is that the spirit of God gives you to do, you better do it. Let's stand on our feet. I need to bring this to a close. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to lift those holy hands very quickly. Father, we bless and give you honor this morning for the spirit of excellence that comes upon us. Help this congregation and our online audience to continue to grow in grace and to grow in Christ likeness. We want to be a people who present a gospel that not only challenges people, but also transforms them. Help us to become stewards of the excellency of the knowledge of Christ and to be a people who demonstrate an impeccable presentation of who he is in the earth. The king of kings and the ancient of old who works wonders in our midst. It's to you we look to. So let excellence be our portion as it relates to the presentation of our skills and that of our person. Let excellence be upon this church as it relates to our corporate activity and the level of engagement we display one to another. Father, every misnomer connected to mindsets that are erroneous about your church, even trending in the minds of some of the saints who are here, let it come under your judgment this morning. And Father, show us a more excellent way. I give you glory and honor for acceleration coming to dreams and desires. They're breakthroughs that must be transacted this year for many of us. So breathe upon our ideas. Breathe upon our disciplines. Breathe upon our connections. Breathe upon our resources and let your breath produce that Zoe life, that transcending life. We honor you for that. And I pray, Lord, for your favor over this congregation. I declare according to Psalm 512 that you will bless us and, Father, you will encompass us as with the shield of favor. Let it be the portion of this gathering. And Father, let life-changing activity for the good come upon this house. Reversal of all agony, debilitating pain, and the onslaught, Lord God, of destructive works. We declare by the Spirit of God a standard is being raised. And Father, there's the emerging of a people who have gone through the water and the fire. And we're coming forth as those who have been cleansed and purified by you, the love of our souls. We give you glory for that. We thank you, Lord God, that you give us the tongue of the learned, that in these days we'll speak as we ought to speak, and we'll behave and govern ourselves as we ought to do so, and you will take the life because you are our reward. Excellence upon us. We give you honor for that. We give you thanks for that in Jesus' name. Come on, put those hands together as we receive. Prophet Garrett Calhoun, he's going to exhort us in giving this morning. Saints, we bless the Lord for you. Uh, you can take your seats. Come on, man of God.
and the greeters, and Herschel, just to make sure you have an envelope. Amen. We know there's five ways to give here at Rivers. Chicago app. faith. 